Hi Twitch. Hey there. Uh, today we have a very, very special guest. Uh, we have Tim Bray here, who is a senior principal at AWS. Right. Hi, Tim Bray. How are you? I am delighted to be here. This is overwhelming. Yeah, so uh, it's your fourth reInvent. That's right. How, uh, how is it going? How is your experience today? It's been great. Um, partly it's because we're getting better at this. I exactly. mean, the, the shuttles are working pretty well this year. Partly because I'm in the serverless group now. Exactly. And serverless is a subject that everybody wants to talk about. And you had and some so, launches, really. And I'm having some really interesting conversations with people who are doing absolutely insane things with the stuff that we ship. So having a good time. So Tim Bray works with uh, the Step Function uh, team. Right? Step Functions is my baby. Exactly. Uh, and he's a senior principal. So I'm sure a lot of people want to understand what does a senior principal uh, do at AWS? Well, we tend to uh, timeshare a yep. lot. Uh, I, I write code. I still write code. That's I actually awesome. checked some stuff into GitHub this morning. So, uh, so that makes me happy. <laughs> uh, we do a lot of design reviews, and you know, there's this wise proverb that says the most important output of a, sen of a, of a senior engineer is more senior engineers. Right. So we try and find the upcoming talent and help them uh, develop. And then occasionally you get that call from a vice president who says, Tim, this group is really having trouble. Things are bad. Can you go figure out and tr try and help them? So there's a certain amount of that. But fortunately, I still get to be part of a team and help ship code sometimes. So, so that's great. Yeah, and there are only 75 of uh, those senior principals at AWS. So it's really a great, uh, great honor. It's, it's, it's an organization that works well, the principal engineer organization, because at Amazon, we give the teams a huge amount of, in, uh, of independence, and they yeah. can charge ahead. And as a result, we have to work really hard to communicate across the teams and make sure we stay reasonably consistent. And the PE organization really helps a lot with that. It's not that we're actually smarter than the regular engineers. It's just that we know more people. Yeah. So I don't know anything. You're connected. We, have, we are connectors, that's right. So, I mean, I don't know anything about FPGAs or elliptic curve cryptography, but if you need to know about that, I can find you somebody who does. It's cool. So you're very well connected in the organization. Yeah, we have lunches, we have an off-site retreat every year. We all know, we have a very active mailing list. So, you're part of the uh, Step Function group, which is serverless. Can you give us a little bit, uh, what's your uh, feeling of serverless and where it might go? And uh, So serverless is, is really surging. I mean, we released the numbers for the first time this morning that we have hundreds of thousands of users for Lambda in particular, which is probably the most central serverless product. Uh, and, you know, serverless has, it's all about frugality, you might spend less, security, you're running more freshly patched instances, yep. and elasticity, the yep. scaling you get for free. Now, you notice that those are all strictly business things. I didn't say a word about technology. That's true. So the things that people are really pushing serverless for are straight business reasons. So that leaves the question aside, um, what about the technology? Do you actually get better designs if you do serverless? Well, we don't know yet, you know, yeah. but you're not going to get worse designs. That's true. And with frugality, elasticity, and security, you should bloody well do it anyhow. That's true. Yeah. And our, our advice to, to the world is do serverless where possible. Right. Clearly, you can't use it for everything, but you know where you can, you should, because you're probably going to come out ahead. Yeah, and you know, serverless for me is a, is a great way to do event-driven architectures, right? Absolutely, and I think that event-driven is a big, big part of the picture. Yeah, um, right. Events are great because you can you can buffer them up, you can you, you get decoupling, you get insulation from load surges, and you also get just looser coupling. So if I'm calling a complicated API. Um, I, instead of just returning the value, I should consider dropping it on an event bus. Right. Because then anybody else can subscribe to that event bus and get the benefit of the work that I've done in extracting that information. And we have a lot of event handling stuff. We have event routing, filtering, processing, delivery. Um, we could do a better job of tying it all together. We could do a better job with the developer experience. We still have a lot of work to do. But it's, it's been a great time. Yeah, and we are always looking for customer feedback. And I'm sure uh, this week you talked to a lot of people that gave you a lot of feedback. Uh, so yep. you're probably going to come out of reInvent with tons of ideas and probably more work to do, right? You know, for us <laughs> on the inside, it's the customer meetings that are really the most important part of reInvent because in the course of three or four days here, I can have literally 20 customer meetings. To see those people, I'd have to get on a plane for a month. Yeah. And, you know, and they can come here and they're, they're using 10 services. They can see all 10 services in the course of three days. Exactly. So it's just insanely efficient for both of us. Well, that's a wrap. Uh, thanks a lot, Tim, uh, for uh, sharing some of your insight and uh, spending time with us. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks. Bye-bye.